Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to write an algebraic expression to represent a situation. Um, and the three that we're going to look at today, um, each of them is only going to use one operation. So they're going to be sort of on the simpler end of things. Alright, so here's our situation. Suppose we have n students in a class. Um, in each case we're asked to write an algebraic expression. Alright, so first of all, suppose that each student has a dictionary. And there are four extra dictionaries, in case somebody forgets theirs or whatever. So the question is, how many dictionaries are there altogether? All right, so here's how you can go about thinking about this. I'm going to draw a little stick person here. Um, and then we're going to put the following thoughts in a thought bubble. Because these aren't going to be our answer, but these are going to sort of help us get to our answer. Suppose that there were 20 students, all right? Now, we don't know that there are 20 students. But the reason that we're going to go about it like this is because that thinking um, about numbers helps you think about algebra because it works the same. Now, if there were 20 students um, and each student had a dictionary and there were four extras, uh, how many would there be? How many dictionaries altogether? Well, there would be 24. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to even write more details. Instead of writing 24, I'm going to write how I found it, which was 20 plus 4. All right? Um, now, suppose that we had a different number of students. Suppose that we had 30 students. How would we figure out how many dictionaries there'd be? Well, each student has one, so that's 30, and there's four more. So we do 30 plus 4. So here's why I'm doing this. If we think about, if we just look for a pattern here, what are we doing? Well, we're taking the number of students and we're adding four to it. So what if we had n students? Well, we take the number of students, that's n, and we'd add four to it. So in this case, our answer is n plus four. There would be n plus four dictionaries. Now, a lot of times with my students, when we're just starting to learn to write expressions, uh, my students want to do something at this point. But this is actually, I just really want to stress, this is the final answer to this question. We're, gonna, we're asked to write an algebraic expression, and this is an expression um, to show how many dictionaries there would be if there were n students and each student had a dictionary and there were four extras. The answer is n plus 4. We don't need to evaluate this expression. We don't need to replace any number with n. Uh, the answer is n plus 4. And the strategy we use here is we imagine different numbers, and we think, well, what would we do with that number? So if we had 20 students, how would we figure out how many dictionaries? Well, we'd add 4. And then we can look for the patterns, and what we're doing every time is the number of students plus 4. So that helps us when we're going to write the expression. It'll be n, which is the number of students, plus 4. So that's the strategy we'll use for each of the three questions. All right, in the second question, um, I'm going to do show sort of two different good ways of thinking about it. All right. um, suppose that we're looking at textbooks now, and each student has a textbook for math, a textbook for science, and a textbook for social studies. So each student has three textbooks, and we want to know how many textbooks there would be all together. Um, so I like to draw this little stick person in the thought bubble. I like to draw it every time because it helps me um, just keep track of... The fact that these numbers, they're not going to be part of their answer. They're just how I'm going to organize my thoughts um, and show my thoughts to someone looking at my work. Um, but my answer is going to look, it's going to be an expression like n plus 4. All right, let's take the same numbers again. Those work pretty well. Suppose we had 20 students. Um, and I think there would probably be maybe two different ways of thinking about this. So maybe I'll do them in two different colors. Um, I've got like a green over here. So I'll do one in blue and one in green. Um, so um, for a lot of people, the way they'd do it was they'd say, OK, well, that's 20 math textbooks and 20 science textbooks and 20 social studies textbooks. So that's a good way to do it. Or another way to do it, which is also good, is some people would say, well, each student has three. So it's three times 20. And that's another good way to do it. All right, so now let's think about what if we had 30 students. I think probably the people who were doing the blue thinking would do the same. They'd say, well, 30 math 
and plus 30 science plus 30 social studies. And the people who are doing the green thinking, they'd probably say, well, each student has three, so it's going to be three times 30. So now we want to know, well, what if we had n students? And actually, maybe just to save a little space here, maybe I'll just write these answers out to the last side of the bubble, bubble, because they're going to be our final answer. So the people doing the blue thinking, they took the number of students, because that's the same as the number of math textbooks, and then the number of students again, because that's the same as the science textbooks, and plus the number of students again, because that's the same as the social studies textbooks. So what they would do, they would do n, because that's n students, plus n, plus n. So that's a perfectly good answer. If you know how to simplify that, uh, you should. If you haven't learned that yet, then this is a perfectly good final answer. Um, and another perfectly good final answer is the people doing the green thinking, they say, well, that's three books per student. So three times however many students you have. So three times n. Um, and then a more professional looking way of writing that is 3n. These mean exactly the same thing. Yeah. All right, so again, we use the same strategy. We thought about some different numbers. And there's nothing magical call about 20 and 30. You could think about 10 students or 25 students or any number of students you thought was some reasonable number for a class. And you think, what would I do with that number? And if you write down at least two examples, if you don't see the pattern yet or you're not quite sure, write down, keep go doing with, going with different examples until you say, oh, every time I'm just adding the number three times or every time I'm multiplying the number by three. Once you see the pattern, then you can do it with n. All right, we'll do one more. So in this case, um, we've got the students that are in groups of five with no one left over. Yeah, just that looks a bit like fire there, doesn't that? Let's groups of five, and nobody's left over, so everybody's in the group of five. So we want to know how many groups are there. All right, so we'll show our thinking here in the little bubble. So suppose, let's take the same numbers again, and then these numbers have the advantage of, um, we could make groups of five with nobody left over too, so that's nice. So if we had 20 students, now, some people will say, well, there'll be four groups, which is absolutely true, but it's more helpful if you write how you got the four. What operation do we do to get four? Um, and sometimes you may think, well, you do four times five, which is true, um, but what you want is an operation that gives you an answer of four. So we'll talk, think about 20 divided by five. So 20 divided by five. And notice every time, you don't even need to write um, the totals or the kind of the final answer when you're doing the the numbers because it doesn't actually help you find the expression you feel free to if you want um, but when you go to find your expression um, don't think about 24 34 here think about 20 plus 4 because it'll help more all right so for 20 students we do 20 divided by 5 and that will get us the four groups we're dividing by 5 because we're making groups and there's five people in each group so we want how many groups of five all right, if we had 30 students, we would do 30 divided by 5. And now, what if we had n students? So if we had n students, what we'd, every time we're taking the number of students and dividing by 5, so that's what we do here. We'd have n divided by 5. And an even more sort of professional looking way of writing that. This is 100% correct. It's even lovelier if you use that division sign there. n divided by 5. All right, so if you're trying to write an algebraic expression for something, and you, if you, it's obvious to you, that's cool. I just go ahead. Um, but if you're, you know, if you're watching this video, you're probably not quite sure how to do it yet. So what you want to do is think, what would I do if it was numbers? If instead of having n students, I had 20 students or 30 students. Um, and then write down a few examples until the pattern really becomes clear to you. And then you can just replace your numbers of students or whatever it is, whatever n is representing, with, with the variable. 
Um, and I really want to stress just one last thing here, that these are the final answers. M plus 4 is the final answer. M plus M plus N is the final answer. 3N is the final answer. And N divided by 5 is the final answer here. We don't need to do anything else because the question asks us for an algebraic expression. All right, good luck with it.